Hello! So today we're going to be going over a Noxus game again. Um, it's just the way the offline recordings kind of went, is that I was just playing a lot of Noxus. I was also playing a lot of um, Thriller and Nyla, but I didn't have any recordings for those because I forgot. Uh, but these are from offline grind sessions where I'm kind of playing more just for like ranking up instead of like trying new things because I like to try the new things on stream when I can do some commentary and make it fun. Uh, but anyways, so uh, the recording starts at 2-5, so we missed a couple of the early rounds, but basically I'm just doing the line where you take Pandora's items. So this is Pandora's items, and I'm going for RFC plus RFC board carry, right? So I really like this comp. I love this comp so much because I feel like it plays towards my style because I like more of a game pace. Like I, I feel a lot more comfortable with a game flow where um, you're kind of like early board, uh, you transition into mid game where you try and stabilize and then you send it for your four cost, um, like four, one, four, two, right? 4 1 slash 4 2, we roll. Right? I don't really like rolling earlier. I like to roll once, like, the econ is really well established and, like, a lot of the people that you're playing with in the lobby, they all have a good sense of direction. And it's really easy for you to see their directions so that when you do your roll down, you can kind of set yourself up well for late game, right? That's the cadence that I kind of like. I don't like to commit super early, but I feel like this patch, a lot of times you want to commit super early. So the reason, um, this patch like I complain about it a lot but I like to put this in the videos because like you know sometimes people like they might only see one of my videos you know what if this is the one that pops off I want to explain myself and my decisions but like a lot of times if there's like rerolls that are good right a lot of people are like send like four or uh, sorry three one slash three two right so a lot of times people are sending it on stage three right the reason for that you can imagine like um, if you've ever played Cho reroll, you've ever played Graves reroll, those are still strong, or Assassins, or anything like that. Um, even if there's two costs, so if it's one cost or two costs, so two costs being Twisted Fate, which is the current one in this particular patch, um, that is really strong, a lot of times what's happening is, is you're sending it early, because you're sending on, like, low odds to try and maximize the chance of you hitting your one cost, if you're going for, like, uh, Graves, Cho, um, all of that, like they're rolling on 3 1 and 3 2 for sure. They're trying, like, a lot of times, like, if you don't have Cho 3 by 3 1 or 3 2, it's kind of like, you know, you lose your, your ability to play for first with those type of comps, right? A lot of times you're trying to hit your whole board by then. Um, if you're playing for Twisted Fate, a lot of times they're slow rolling throughout stage 3, or they're sending it on 3 1 or 3 2 to get like a 2 star Valkots or a 2 star Twisted Fate so that they're strong for stage 3. Because the thing with reroll comps is that you want it. The typical way you play rerolls is that you want to be strong for stage 3, and then um, stage 4 you kind of try and complete your board by like kind of sending it, right? Um, the problem with this is that it's really hard to play 4 costs, because like I'm usually rolling for a 4 cost on 4-1-4-2, four, two, four, four, two, which means I'm basically going to be weak unless I hit like a good opener. Um, I'm going to be weak for most of stage 3, right? Because unless you like natural a couple, like you're not trying to send it, you might ha like partially send it on three one three two to stabilize. But if you don't hit, it's like you're not digging for units, right? Um, you're trying to establish your econ so you can go seven or even go eight. But in this like current thing, there's like no chance of going eight. You gotta go seven, send it on seven, and hope you hit, right? Anyways, that brings me to Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate's so good. Uh, the reason he's good is because this item is busted, this RFC item. And I think they're still not changing it, so it should... This sh I, I, we'll see how it plays out, because they're buffing Kai'Sa, and like maybe challengers will be broken or something. But this is RFC. Uh, for those that don't know, it's like plus one range. It has a couple other like side effects, but the main thing is like the plus one range. And it's really good on two comps. It's really good on Nyla, and it's really good on Mordekaiser right so a lot of times what you do is you can pick twisted fate and you can you can ask yourself reroll question mark and you look at your lobby is there anybody going reroll right so i scouted before this and i think there was two people going twisted fate already so you say reroll if there's there's gonna be two twisted fate players if they're not two twisted fate players you're one of the twisted fate players a lot of the time and then that's uh because the comp can support two pretty sustainably in the current patch so then what you say is okay um I'm not going reroll, right? Not reroll. So what you do is then you itemize towards making two RFCs, 
right? And then you could put them on either Nyla or Mord, right? And Nyla, you usually go for Nyla Bruiser, right? So you get in a Sedge, you get in an Ash. It has Freylord, which has the passive, which does like all this good shit for Nyla. And then you put in some Bilge War, and then Nyla just spreads damage, and you give her double RFC, and it's busted, right? This is good because what happens is uh, a one, like a one caught, uh, sorry, an unleveled Nyla, right? A Nyla one. A Nyla 1 star could stabilize you in a lot of cases, right? This will stabilize you on 4-1, right? And that's the reason that you were greeting uh, instead of like, because some of the combats aren't that strong. That's the main reason why we pick Pandora's, right? Is because we need to guarantee that our Nyla or our Mordekaiser is going to be giga strong on stage 4. Because the chances are uh, we're going to lose streak on stage 3 or we're going to lose a lot of health on stage 3 against like a lot of the reroll comps. So we need to be like giga strong later. So what we're picking is we're basically like prioritizing getting like really strong items on really strong units that a one star version of them could carry us until we can hit level eight or until we have time to dig for the two star that will stabilize us to late game that will get us our guaranteed top four. So that's why Twisted Fate kind of is, that's why I play Twisted Fate because even though this kind of still is kind of degenerate, where like, look, my whole game plan, I just drew on the board in like one minute, and it's like the same game plan as a lot of other people. At least there's some level of flexibility where I can like roll and decide what the game gives me and then play it. Um, but these are like the priorities. And then you could put something in temporarily, but um, but that brings us to Mordekaiser, right? So the only time I really played for Mordekaiser, so this is the Bandle one, so I have plus one spat right so with these comps right it can be either be noxus which i made already or it can be bilge water right the thing with noxus is that noxus you can kind of play a lot more easily for a win because noxus you're strong early because you gain your stacks anyways that's all i wanted to say that uh usually i would talk over like the stage two and kind of explain it uh but that's what i want to go over so that's the basis so I'm already 5 Noxus on stage 2-5, um, which is insane. But basically, I started the game with a Samira 2, basically. So I saw Samira 2 at a Noxus opener because I got dropped this Katarina. So I said to myself, okay, um, it's a Noxus game, right? Mordekaiser is a lot less... Like, if you've played Mordekaiser and you've played Nyla with this type of Kate, like gameplay plan... Uh, you'll notice that Nyla is like way better than Mordekaiser in a lot of the cases. Like, it's not even close right uh not to like diss mordekaiser because mordekaiser i think is like my favorite champ from like league <laughs> so like, I, I, I wish he was better uh, he's already good enough it's fine but um the main thing to consider is that um noxus stacks matter a lot for mordekaiser so if you have a noxus opener a lot of times it's like okay i'm just gonna play towards mordekaiser now i have a noxus spat so if i roll down on seven and i hit nyla I can just play Noxus Nyla until I hit Mordekaiser, or I can pivot to the board, right? There's a pivot option, right? I've, I've, I'm basically looking for two different types of carries that I can make it work. So I put RFC on Renekton for two reasons. One reason is uh, I might go like, because it's like the one where you have like spats and stuff. It's like, I'm probably going to sell the Renekton and it's a Renekton 2. So it's okay to put the items on the Renekton 2, in my opinion, right? Because he's one of my stronger units. There's an argument maybe I could put on Samira, but I don't know yet if I'm going to reroll Samira, like, and I might hit Samira 3. So I don't really want to slam items on her that I'm, I know I'm going to put on somebody else, right? Um, I could put on Cassio, but basically I just put on Renekton because he's 2 starred already. And I'm going to sell him, so then I'll get that item back. When I pivot my board to playing Mordecai, so I'll just get rid of the Renekton, right? Uh, Renekton's okay as well because he gets the Shurima from, um, like, I make sure that he's the one that ascends right so it's it's all good anyways i'm just clearing this out um the other reason so that's like the first reason the other reason is that i want to put on this video um if you don't know there's an easter egg where um renekton if you give him uh what's it called if you give him rfc he does like a special animation which i'll point out when we see it but that's like a little fun thing so if you're watching a youtube video and you want to you want to show to your friends your your amazing knowledge and cool cool uh stuff we'll, we'll point it out here i don't know what it is i think it's like his w or whatever right watch so like i'm trying to zoom in to show you check it out
Oh, you see it? Yeah, so that's the Easter egg. He does that. He does um that spinning spiral attack. I forget what it's called because I don't play League that much. But um, if you give him an RFC, he does that. It's like an Easter egg. Isn't that cool? Anyways, uh, for augment, so like you don't really need. Like I'm checking stats a little bit just to see. So I think I tab out and it's hard to see what it is. Um, I end up taking long distance pal. So like a lot of times, I th I don't think I don't know. I check the stats after to make sure, and I think long distance pal is better for Mordekaiser carry. Uh, gifts from the fallen, it's like decent, but the thing is, like you already have like a lot of stats, a lot of a lot of stats from Noxus, right? Especially if you're playing towards seven Noxus, and I have a spat, so I know I'm gonna hit seven Noxus this game. Um, so I think long distance pal is better in that case, right? I think if you're like five Noxus, maybe this one, but Noxus gives like a lot of um of the other stats, right? So it's kind of like a little bit of diminishing returns. Uh, LDP gives a lot of stats, but it's like it makes it more like focused towards like just having Giga units. And I'm debating it a lot. I just take LDP. I think LDP is the right decision. I, I looked it up. They're very close. Usually you want like non-combat. Uh, you want combat augments that are non-stats, right? So like, um, for example, like the bow one is really good, I think, for Noxus because it just makes Mordekaiser attack faster. You know, like you have my bow, I think it's called. Stuff like that is usually what you want, or like social, maybe not social distancing, but like, um, because that gives the same stacks as Noxus, but you know what I mean. I hope, I hope to explain it well enough. So, because I'm so strong, as you can see, this is one of those games where it's like, now I'm thinking like, okay, this is a top four, and maybe I can start greeting playing for first. Also, I signed the Jinsu. Um, I, I don't know what's outdated or not. I think the way I usually play Mordekaiser is I go RFC. RFC, uh, Jinsu Rageblade, right? I think this is, like, old shit, right? This is, like, old news. I think when, um, because there's so many Jarvins and stuff, and you just want, like, the attack speed, and, like, the team, like, the team fights don't last that long, because especially against, like, Twisted Fate boards, it's, like, the whole board explodes in, like, 10 seconds. Um, I think you don't build, uh, Jinsu's Rageblade anymore. You should be building, um, what's it called? QSS. The Quicksilver cloak. It's like green, uh, because that gives you attack speed and it gives you cr uh, crowd control immunity. And I think that just works better. I think if you look up the stats, I looked up after this game. I don't want to pull up the stats and stuff uh, this this video um, because I don't have it prepared. But uh, it's better. Uh, obviously, it's, it's uh, board specific, but I think in this lobby as well, I think QSS is good. Uh, okay, so I find an Azir, so I sell the Renekton for Azir and I put the items on Azir because what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to tempo and play strong board, right? I'm okay with like staying at around 40 gold and not being at 50 gold. Uh, I can also sell some of these units if I really need to and I want to hit the 50 econ, but I'm just saying, okay, even if I don't hit a Mordekaiser, I might be able to stabilize around a strategist Azir board, which is why I put in the Silco as well. So what I'm thinking is like... I'm almost at Wolves, I can sack a little bit of gold this round to make sure that I kind of uh, keep myself really high health, right? Uh, for me, like, it may, there's different gameplay styles in the game, like, that you can do. I find that the more health I have, the more I feel comfortable. I think that's, like, really dumb to say in a way because I think everybody feels that way. But there's some people that are really comfortable with, like, losing and, like, they don't really care if they're low health or not. For me, it's, like... I think I'm just too dumb, right? I just need to like, uh, especially with like scouting sometimes that I like misunderstand like if I'm stronger than certain boards. I like to have like as much of a buffer as possible because I feel like I can like, I feel like especially late game, I can identify my win con, but if I don't have enough health to get there, I feel like I, I feel like I just lose, right? I think other people can identify win cons a lot faster. So then you might want to lose streak in certain cases more to like maximize your econ. But for me, it's like I'd rather like mess up my econ a little bit and win streak because I, I think the health is going to be more important than the money is what I'm trying to say for me as a player. Uh, Alright, I think I beat this guy. No, I think I... Yeah, I beat this guy. I'm pretty sure. The items aren't bad on Azir either with a Jinsu, but it's not like this. Anyways. I'm just like slight rolling. I'm at 60. And I'm at, I'm at 60 and I'm at level 6. 
I'm just like buying units. I think in um, in this lobby because I'm super high health. Um, a lot of times, like if you're like struggling, and you're contested, you want to roll uh, on neutrals, which is really counterintuitive. But basically, you send it to around 30 gold on neutrals because you're like, okay, um, I need to hit these before the other people hit them, uh, and it's really bad. But it's just the way that the cadence of the matches go that everybody's going really fast, right? So like a lot of people, like even these guys, you can see they're hitting two star Jarvan at the turn of the round. It's like a lot of times like they're already starting to roll um, on uh, on the neutrals. Anyways, I roll a little bit. I hit seven. I hit a Mortar Kaiser super early. Uh, I'm rolling like a little bit because I just want like another upgrade, right? Like I have six Noxus in. I should have seven, right? Did I just not put him in? Oh yeah, there my spat. And I kind of stop. I'm like maybe I'm probably gonna sell this and this. To hit 40 gold and then I might see if I'm stable or not uh, I completely messed up my things right what I was trying to do chat a lot of the time was uh, uh, the Noxus spat next to my Mordekaiser because Bandle cafeteria it's like if a spat is next to another person it feeds them and they get more health right so I'm not really abusing that in the game because I'm kind of like thinking more about position rather than like I need to put my Noxus spat guy next to my other health guy but that's what I'm trying to position my board around, which maybe is like not the best thing. I hate I hate like galaxies that kind of do that. Anyways, the prismatic last augment. So I'm looking at what I want. I have Pandora's, so I think Lucky Gloves with Pandora's works really well, or even Radiant Glo uh, Gloves. Um, the reason I'm thinking Lucky Gloves is good. I think it looks like, I think Radiant Relics might have better performance when I looked it up. But my logic was because I already have Pandora's and it's hard to like search up all these things without like the premium features. I have Pandora's and I have Noxus, right? So if I get like ideal items for most of my board, um, it's it's really efficient, right? It's because my whole board is gaining a bunch of Noxus stacks. So I'm okay with um, itemizing everybody at this point, right? My, my board already has full items. So it's like almost like way more efficient if I get like lucky enough uh, little pun there. Lucky enough with like the Pandoras, I can itemize a lot of uh, my other units, which is pretty cool. Right? So I put it on Samira. I have one more glove. I think I put it on Katarina. Yep. And then um, because like, you know, I might hit a three star of the other ones, right? Like um, Katarina, especially if I roll a bit. Uh, this was before Darius got too many buffs. Like, he's getting more buffs. I don't know if Darius is going to be good. But in my head, I'm like, Katarina does AP damage. So if she has Biss items, and then I long distance with those two, um, it'll help out my Mordekaiser a little bit more. But anyways, for most of this uh, part, like, I'm still pretty strong, but I really fall off, right? So not having the QSS matters in a lot of these fights, but I keep getting Jarvan stunned because it's hard to like place my Mordekaiser because I don't have like a, a baiting backline, if that makes sense. And I think I just barely lose this one. This guy's like one HP. As you can see, I fall off really hard, but that's fine because now I'm like econing, right? And a lot of people are hitting like their Giga strong boards, right? And you know, like the Giga strong board for multicasters because it's broken is just two starring Twisted Fate and Valkos, and then you just win out a lot of the time. So, you know, it's kind of funny, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm looking for a glove. I don't, I don't hit it on the carousel. Um, I'm just waiting for Pandora's to give me a glove, so I'm not really slamming any items. This guy ends up like that he's contesting into Mordekaiser, but he's like going Slayer. Um, I think at first I thought he was going Rogue because he was playing towards Echo, but I think he naturaled into a Mordekaiser and that's why he decided to play the Mordekaiser. But he also has an RFC, so I don't know what happened here, but I'm not too concerned because I already have a uh, Mordekaiser 2 by this point, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I already hit my Mordekaiser 2 just naturally. Uh, I think I rolled a little bit at one point in this stage. I don't remember where. I think it was like right here-ish. When did I hit the Mordekaiser? Actually, I should look just to make sure that I know what's up. I think I sent it like... Oh, did I just like natural it here? Yeah, I actually didn't roll that much. I kind of I kind of high rolled this. But high rolling helps in like the placement a lot. Right. If I didn't, if I didn't hit the Mordekaiser naturally, uh, I would have sent it right around here for the Mordekaiser. And if I didn't hit the Mordekaiser, I'd probably be like 
10-ish less health, right? So let's say I'm like 30 health. So just keep that in mind when I drop to like 10 HP that I would be like 10 HP less if I didn't high roll. That's how I feel would, it would work out. I'm rolling for upgrades here anyways because it's like whatever. Um, I slam this because like I'm kind of waiting for these thieves gloves. I eventually hit the glove for the Katarina. But it's like, is it better just to give this guy some some tankiness, right? Because my, my Nasus, even though Nasus is a tank, uh, he has the Noxus emblem. So he has a lot of uh, stats. At this point, I have full stacks. I beat the whole lobby at least once. So I'm thinking like maybe my Nasus can just do work. He can do some damage, right? You can give him like Titan's Bloodthirster in a lot of cases. And then he's like kind of like a scary unit, uh, like Titan, Titan's Bloodthirster. But uh, that's more if you're like making him like be really like attack heavy, which isn't that great. If I have to be honest, usually want just to be the tank. But on this board, it's like, I feel like I should just put more damage. Anyways, because I had a lot of gold, I was level 8. Uh, for my level 8, I didn't mention it, but I just put in a Slayer. Uh, I have Kiana in. I want to switch her for Aatrox eventually. Where is she? Right here. I have Kiana in. I want to switch her for Aatrox. This guy's next to this guy because I'm hoping that it gives him some passive stacks. Uh, the only thing I'm considering is if I make a, uh, a Spark, right? So I'm trying to like position my Mordekaiser, swap sides. So basically I'm swapping these two from left to right. Uh, just in case somebody sees it. And I put him down. Make sure that my... I'm making sure because uh, the with the Thieves Gloves, I'm basically giving him some extra AP. Right? With the long distance pals. Because I think in uh, AD or whatever these items are giving, right? So that's the main idea there. But hopefully, like, the game kind of is, like, it is what it is now. This is my board for a lot of the game. I'm not really going to cap out around anything else. I just want to, like, optimize, like, with the legendaries, right? Scion for somebody is probably good, right? If I can hit that, um, you know, Slayer, I want Aatrox in, right? If I can fit in Aatrox and maybe, like, I put in, like, a Juggernaut or something. There's a bunch of spats on the carousel and I don't hit anything that I can use. I just take uh, a last whisper because in my head I'm like this is probably good on somebody. I put it on uh, this one because she's like an AD uh, what's it called AD thing. And this is an AD item. It doesn't really help too much because I'd rather have like sh uh, I have like magic resist reduction than armor resistance, which is what this causes. But uh, it's fine anyways, right? I just trying to find any sort of usable item. I'm not gonna take a bilge water spat. Anyways, also, if we look at it, so, like, imagine I didn't high roll, I would expect to be, like, 30-ish health, right? 30-ish health is what I mean by the board's still strong, right? I high rolled the Mordekaiser, but even if I didn't, like, maybe if I low rolled, I'd be, like, somewhere over here. But, like, I'd still be, like, near the top of the lobby, but now I'm in, like, a contender for first because I hit my, uh, my Mordekaiser. The lobby itself, I feel like there was a lot of people that were, like, giga, giga weak. This guy's hitting Vel'Koz now, he hit Vel'Koz 3. Um, so he's gonna probably win streak and rise up to the top because that's broken. Well, the contestant multicaster didn't hit that early, which also helped me stay really high health. This game could have easily been like you know if this guy hit Vel'Koz three a bit earlier because it's stage five, right? Almost dragon. It's pretty late game, um, at least for the tempo. So that helped me with my four cost carry be a lot stable for a lot longer. Because I think now I'm just gonna get railed by people. Like this guy, I think he just owns me, right? Uh, look at my look at my front line. They're all, they're all dead, right? My Mordecai is gonna start taking damage in a second. That's the way it is, right? A lot. I'm I'm expecting to bleed out, right? With Noxus, a lot of times your win con is to hit nine Noxus. Um, like I don't think seven Noxus can really beat um, the multicaster boards if they have time to cap out, right? Anyways, the guy with Vel'Koz 3 died anyways. I don't know how, but um, somebody beat him. Probably the Piltover cash out. Which means that now there's a guy that's uncontested multicaster, right? Sometimes you low roll. Like that guy, I think he just low rolled that he was super low health before hitting the Vel'Koz's. But look, like the guy who's still alive was the guy that rolled for Twisted Fate. So now he's high enough level to roll for Vel'Koz and roll for Sona. And the guy died. And he's like, so look, like you can see him. He's hitting Sona 3. He waited till this guy died. And I'm, now I'm like, okay, I'm playing for at most second because this guy exists. Look at him. He's just hitting everything. He's sending it and he's hitting everything. Boom, Vel'Koz 3, right? 
a lot of times, like, the only times you can kind of, like, squeak out some placements is if the contester for multicasters also lives, right? Because a lot of times with multicaster, it's like you either have Twisted Fate 3 or you have um, Valkos 3. Anyways, this guy is a 36 charge T-Hex. So I look at this guy, I look at the other guy, I'm like, I'm playing for third. And that's fine. It is what it is, right? At a Noxus game, they're pretty simple in general. But what I was saying is, like, a lot of times when you're in these contested reroll comps, if you don't, you look at your opponent and you're like, which one are they going for? Because you always have to pick one to start with, right? You can't three-star everybody instantly, right? You have to pick, am I going to three-star Twisted Fate? Or do I push levels, go for Jarvan, and three-star Vel'Koz? So the guy that three-stars is the Vel'Koz, so he's the one that pushed levels. He didn't stabilize pushing the levels early enough. He lost too much health and he died too fast. So now the guy that stayed low level, uh, three-star Twisted Fate three-starred his Galio. He now is high enough level where he can two-star Jarvan, three-star everybody, and it's just over. Uh, I've pushed levels to seven here. I'm thinking maybe I can fit in four Slayer. Like, there's a chance, right, if I swap this guy out for a Slayer, but I'm thinking, eh, maybe it's not worth it. But I just level for Aatrox because um, I was pushing levels to try and find a Scion and maybe make my front line a little bit better. Scion also gives a lot of stun, uh, and I could also swap in like a Jarvan for somebody. Um, I'm just looking at it, and because I, I looked at the lobby and I said I'm playing for third, I want to make sure that I beat this guy, right? And I knew that I was playing this guy next, and that's why I leveled up, chat, right? So I leveled up because I said I need to beat this guy, because if this guy accidentally beats me, then I'm playing for fourth, right? Because it's then it's, then it's down to God himself, and Jesus Christ is going to decide what I'm gonna what I'm gonna play right um so that's what you look at right I saw the guy with the capped multicaster board and the guy with the piltover and I said I need to beat this guy I push my level I make sure I play the strongest board this turn I make sure he dies and I guarantee my third and that's what I did right so I guarantee my third um and now I'm playing against I think it's a piltover guy right the problem is piltover isn't that strong because like you really need a, like a combat augment, right? If you look at this guy, he only has healing ores, which is pretty good, but it's not like that good, right? So like if you look at this match, I have a Nyla too, by the way. I just naturaled it when I was rolling on level 9. And I put her in because I'm like, whatever, you know, that's pretty cool. Anyways, my Murakaiser just lives with 1 HP. That's insane. So I just beat this guy narrowly. And I think that's a problem with Piltover a little bit. Like, they nerfed it a bunch. But trust me, it, it's, it's fine the way it is, right? I think the Piltover guy would win the lobby if um, Multicaster wasn't so broken. Because, like, that kind of puts a lot of pressure that he can't econ and stabilize early. Anyways, uh, this is the part that I want to go over the most, chat. This isn't a me mistake. And, you know, we try not to point out other people's mistakes. I'm not trying to roast people for fun right because like whatever so i just beat this guy right and he sees a heimer which might give him heimer too so i can understand this guy deciding to himself okay uh i'm gonna go for heimer here because that's important for me to try and secure a second place because he's probably not beating this guy right uh this guy is the multicaster guy what's that chat and what am i playing chat Right? What am I playing on my board? It's crazy. So, I think this is like, I don't know if it's hubris, if he just wasn't paying attention, or if he just didn't care. Maybe it's just like late at night and he just doesn't care. Uh, you always deny this, chat. The only way he loses is if I get this spat. This is my win con. Now I get first for free. Right? I'm first. That's me, I'm first now. GG, everybody. The whole lobby just lost. I'm 9 Noxus, right? You know what? I'm missing Scion. You know what level I am? 9. So what am I going to do this turn? I'm sending it for Scion. What do I hit? Okay, so here, here's another thing. I don't know if this is the right play, but I was like, surely I can hit Scion if I sell my whole bench, right? And I have like a replacement uh, Nasus that I can swap in as well, right? So what I was thinking in my head is like, I have enough gold, right? So don't look at my money here that it's really low. I was like, I have this guy I can sell, I have this guy that I can sell, I have this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So I was like, eh, you know, rough math, let's do like some quick math, it's like 20 extra gold, I have like 10 shops, right? 10 shops, 16% chance, it's, it's good odds to hit a Scion, right? And then if I really need to, I can sell this Ari. 
Uh, but I made the Ari because I was like, eh, it's probably better than like one of these, right? Surely I can like, maybe I can swap the Thieves Gloves, right? I can sell, I can sell this Samira, I can put Thieves Gloves on her. You know, we'll see what happens, right? I'm down. Uh, and in the worst case, I just sell and I lose a little bit of gold. Uh, but I'm also like, note my life, right? I'm 21. I, I, in my head, I think I'm two lives, right? So I'm like, I have two rounds to hit this time as well. Anyways, I'm rolling, I'm rolling, I'm rolling. Who do I hit? Scion. Uh, I need to swap out somebody for it. I, I end up selling that guy just because I'm like, ah, Nasus is good with the Noxus emblem. Uh, so I just sell the Aatrox because I'm like, I have two Juggernaut anyways. I lose Slayer, but I'm like, it's fucking over. I have RE2 with a Noxus emblem. She gains a bunch of AP. And then look who I'm playing. I'm playing the multicaster guy. Guess what I am? I'm 9 Noxus. GG. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's actually pretty close. Um, it's not like a guaranteed win. Uh, but this guy doesn't, he's, uh, I think he's still level 7, right? Because Infernal Contract. I think if he has, like, Azir, and he has, like, an itemized Azir, for example, um, he wins, right? I, I, or I think it's, like, closer. It's hard to say. But, yeah. And then, like, watch, like, look, this thing, look, he's here sitting looking at my board now. Like, bro, like, Hello? Like what, 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 like my positioning isn't going to change the fact that I'm 9 Noxus with an RE2 and a, and a thing. And that happened in one turn, right? In one turn, I went from third to first. And that's why chat, like, you know, uh, I'm not trying to flame the guy. I'm just saying like, um, if you're playing a board, don't get too like, like, you know, I don't know if this is exactly what I was thinking, but don't get too like nonchalant about it, right? Deny the other people their win con. This guy doesn't need a Noxus emblem, but who cares? You, you take it to make sure that you guarantee your first. Because I was no shot I'd ever beat this board without the Noxus plus one. Right? But now it's just guaranteed first. Look, check this out. Boom. Dead. Right? He had Infernal Contract, Multicasters, 3 star everybody. You know what I mean? Like, it's insane. Anyways. So, I don't think I show much elo I gain. Maybe I do. Let's just see for fun. I gained 41. So, that, that game made me feel good. Because 41 is pretty good. 41 for a first? Yeah, we take those. Uh, better than like 10 for a third. But yeah, so that's the video today. So what's the big takeaways? I hopefully like, you know, if you've seen some of the Noxus videos, maybe it's like a bit redundant. Uh, we saw the cool Renekton attack, boom, right there. And uh, deny other people their win cons, right? That's really important. So that's a learning moment that even though I went first, that's something you can learn for like, you know, if I was in the opposite position, how to optimize the other board, right? Uh, but anyway, so this is, you know, I play a lot better off stream as you can see, uh, so it's nice to put something on the channel where I can say that I won. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'll probably be live tonight if people watch this today playing some TFT. I need to get some more daily uploads for tomorrow and stuff, and usually I play TFT on Tuesdays and Thursdays because they rhyme or have the, the T at the start. Uh, anyways, thank you for watching, I'll see you guys around, have fun in your days.